What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.5 about a month after the release of 15.4.1. And along with this release, we also got iPadOS 15.5, tvOS 15.5, HomePodOS 15.5, watchOS 8.6, and macOS Monterey 12.4. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 15.5 and what's new in the updates, along with the performance, battery life, and if you should update or not. And as always, if I notified you of this update before your iPhone did, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I post these detailed videos every time a new iOS update drops. All right, so before we get into the changes, let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update. You can see here it came in at 673 3.8 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro. That size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from, but that is coming from 15.4.1. So most of you should see a size around that. So if you're gonna check out the build number, let's go to our settings, general about 15.5, you will see the new build number here is 19F77. And if we scroll down a little bit, you could see the modem firmware is 1.61.00. And that number could be different depending on your carrier. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.5? And the first thing is inside of the podcast application. If we go into one of our shows, and then let's just go ahead and tap on this show. If we tap on the three dots up in the top right-hand corner and then go to settings, we have something new here under downloads. So I have iOS 15.4.1 on the left, and you can see down here, we have a couple of changes. So it now says automatically download instead of automatic downloads. And it used to just be a kill switch there, but now we actually have some options for our automatically downloading podcasts. So if we tap on that, we have this right here. So we have a nice list of options for downloading and keeping certain episodes and deleting the rest. So for example, if I only wanted the five latest episodes from this podcast and I wanted every other one to be deleted from my phone so it didn't take up storage, I would select this right there and there we go. I would only have the five latest episodes and everything else would be deleted. So you could choose that by episodes or by days or you could just do all new episodes right there. So that's a nice new feature that's gonna help you reduce the amount of storage space that podcast takes up on your device because it's going to automatically delete those episodes Episodes, so you don't have to remember to do so or you don't have to wait until your device is full and it's number one on your iPhone storage list before you decide you need to go in there and delete some podcast episodes. We also have some changes to Apple Pay Cash. So if you tap on the Apple Pay Cash card in your wallet application, if you have it set up, you can see that it now says Apple Cash instead of Apple Pay Cash. And then also right down below that, we have request and send buttons that allows you to request and send money straight from the wallet application. And then in the messages application, in the app drawer. So if you tap on the A right here to go into your applications for iMessage, you will see the Apple Pay Cash now says Apple Cash, whereas before it just said Apple Pay. So that little icon has changed right there as well. This update also includes a fix for location-based automations. So you can see here, I have this automation set up in shortcuts that says every time I arrive home, my music on my HomePod in the kitchen plays. But ever since iOS 15.4, that has been very hit or miss. It wouldn't work every single time, but now after updating to 15.5, it works properly. And speaking of automations, you'll also notice this new alert after updating. It happens every time you reboot your device. So it says automations will run once your iPhone is unlocked. There's also a minor change in the home application. So if you long press on one of your home pods and then go down and press on settings and then go all the way down to the bottom where it says Wi-Fi address, if you tap on that and it shows your SSID to the the right of that it now shows wi-fi bars like signal bars they're not actually interactive they're not actually dynamic it doesn't change based on your connection it's just a glyph icon that's there now in 15.5. Universal control is now officially out of beta with iPad OS 15.5 and Mac OS 12.4. So universal control should run better now on both iPad and Mac. If we go into Safari and tap on the share sheet, you will see we have a new glyph icon next to find on page. So on the left hand side is iOS 15.4.1 right side is the new 15.5 update. So just a minor change there to that glyph icon. In the weather application, if you're on your current location and you scroll down close to the bottom, you will see we now have a little bubble here for report an issue. Whereas before it was just text on previous versions, you still get the same options when you tap on it, 
but that section there has changed a little bit. In the news application, if you see something says preview audio, if you tap on the three dots right there, you can see now in 15.5, you get the option in the contextual menu when you tap on those three dots to preview the audio from there, whereas you did not get that in previous versions. iOS 15.5 will also block sensitive locations from showing up in memories. So each location that is on basically Apple's like block list or their blacklist has latitude, longitude, and a radius assigned so that the photos application knows to ignore those photos at those locations when creating new memories. So you can see the list of sensitive locations on the screen right now. This update also introduces the Apple account card, which is a rebranding of the iTunes pass. So this was in the code of 15.5. I'm not seeing it on the front end of my device just yet, but that has been included with this update. And this update will also reintroduce an Apple Music API used by third party music players that will allow users to change the playback speeds of songs within the application. So this is a feature that was removed with iOS 15.4 and there was a lot of backlash in the developer community. So Apple actually listened to this and they're bringing it back with iOS 15.5. So it's great to see Apple, you know, listening to feedback online and responding so quickly to it. Now this update also seems to have improved the loading times for the storage section in our settings. So if you go to settings, general, and then to iPhone storage, it seems to load a lot faster now than it did on a previous build. I know a lot of people had issues with that in the past, but it seems to have gotten faster here with 15.5. And as far as the release notes go, the release notes are very, very similar to what they were on 15.5. There is one minor change with store kit and just a few other little minor changes here, but really nothing much different from 15.4 in terms of the developer release notes. We also haven't seen anything new on the Apple classical application. So this was in the code for 15.5, but there's nothing showing up on the front end. So I'm guessing Apple is just waiting for iOS 16 before pushing out a brand new application that's going to be separate from the Apple Music app. Now, as far as the performance goes, the past few updates have had really good performance 15.4 and 15.4.1 and you can expect about the same here from 15.5 now I've used this software on multiple different devices iPhones iPads even the iPod touch and I've not noticed any you know lag no stutter no UI bugs really nothing at all in terms of bugs which is always a good sign so I would not expect a big increase in performance going from 15.4 or 15.4.1 to 15.5 but also I would not be worried about your device, you know, running slower after this update. I don't really think it's going to get any worse. And then for numbers sake, you can see here, I got a 1740 on the single core and a 4793 on the multi-core. So pretty solid numbers there in terms of Geekbench scores. And as for the battery life, it's pretty much the same deal. So iOS 15.4.1 fixed that major battery drain bug that affected a lot of users on 15.4. But if that update did not fix battery drain for you, then 15.5 very well might because I've been seeing, you know, pretty good results from 15.5. I've been using the final version here for a few days and the battery life is right there on par with 15.4.1, if not better for me on every device I've tested it on. So I will continue monitoring this. And if anything changes, I will let you know in my next Apple Weekly episode on Saturday. But so far, so good with battery life. All right, so now let's answer the question, should you update to iOS 15.5? And I say, absolutely. There's really no reason not to once we get this deep into a software cycle, not even just iOS 15, just in general. I mean, we're on a 0.5 update. We're getting close to iOS 16, at least closer to iOS 16. So the changes might seem minor, but the bug fixes and the security enhancements are also a big reason to update. And if you have performance, you know, or battery life issues, you might find Find that those are going to be resolved with iOS 15.5. Now, of course, if you want to be on the safer side of things and just wait for everybody to kind of use it for a few days, then you could go ahead and wait. I will be releasing my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday, where I will give my full, you know, one week later review on 15.5. So if you want to be safe, you could wait for that video and then decide if you want to update or not. But so far, you know, I don't really see any reason to not update. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So iOS 16 beta one is going to be here 
and just a few weeks right there on June 6th. That's going to be when we see the first beta of the next major iOS release. But if you're not on the betas, if you're just wanting to know about the public releases, then a 15.5.1 could come sometime in the next few weeks. That's going to be something that could just patch up like a security vulnerability or just a major bug that is out there. But we don't know for sure if that's coming or not yet. However, I would expect a 15.6 to come out probably at the end of June would be my guess for a 15.6. And that'll also include some minor features and a lot of bug fixes and changes on the back end as well. So right now, though, the main you know thing that we're all going to be looking forward to is going to be iOS 16 right there on June 6th. But anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 15.5. Quite a few changes, not really anything too major, just a lot of really small changes. And of course, some tweaks to the OS as well along with some security updates but if you guys enjoy this video I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe I have a lot of iOS 16 coverage coming very soon and I will also continue covering iOS 15 here on the channel as well but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon